Hi students, welcome back to a video series on signals and systems. In this video, we will discuss some practical examples of signals and systems. As we have discussed in the previous video, there are infinite number of examples we can have for signals and systems. Because signals and systems or signal processing has so many applications in the real life. In this particular video, we will see some practical examples from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and biomedical engineering. Some of these examples are very simple examples like mass on a frictionless surface. We also have some complex examples. So let us consider the mass on a frictionless surface. Here we can see that a mass is on a frictionless surface. So this is a frictionless surface here. You can see this is a frictionless surface and we have a mass m. Now we can apply an input force. Let us call that f of t. Right? f of t is the input force. We have already studied in our high school classes that if you apply a force to this mass which is on this frictionless surface, it will create an acceleration for the mass. So there is an output acceleration a of t as given in this particular figure. So this is a simple mass. We are just applying an input force and output acceleration is generated. Even this simple mass is an example of a system. Here we can consider the input force as the input signal and the output acceleration as the output signal. And here the system is mass. The simple mass which is sitting on a frictionless surface is an example of a system. So what are the equations corresponding to this mass on a frictionless surface? We have learned from Newton's laws that the acceleration of the mass is directly proportional to the applied force and the constant of proportionality is m. So we will generally say f is equal to ma. So here f of t is equal to ma of t. This t represents this force and acceleration is depending on time, right? So this force and this acceleration is depending on time. That means the force is varying with respect to time. So the acceleration is also varying with respect to time. We can also write this equation as f of t is equal to m into d vt by dt. That means rate of change of velocity. So we have already studied this in school that rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So we can also write this equation in this form f of t is equal to m into d by dt of v of t. That is rate of change of velocity is equal to acceleration. So this is an example of a system. We have a system that is the mass. We have an input signal and an output signal. Right. Now let us go to the another example. So this example is a spring mass system. It is like this. Assume that we have a spring and a mass attached at the end of the spring and the other end of the spring is attached to a stick. Right. And now we will move this stick in a periodic manner and let us plot the movement of stick as x of t and based on this movement of stick how this mass at the end of the spring will move. So that is denoted as y of t. So the movement of the stick is denoted as x of t and the movement of the mass which is at the end of the spring is denoted as y of t. Here the spring and mass together make the system. So this is the system and the input signal can be considered as the movement given by the hand to the stick and this is the input signal and how the mass at the end of the spring is moving that is the output signal. The movement of the stick is periodic in nature so it will move like a sine wave so this is periodic in nature. So when this is moving periodically how the mass is moving so we can see that instead of moving upwards see here you can see x of t is going upwards going to the maximum going downwards and coming back to zero right so this is how the stick is going to move right and based on that moment how this mass is moving here you can see that initially instead of going upwards it is moving downwards and from there it is going upwards so you can see there is a lag in the movement of the mass right that is what shown here here we have a mass spring system this is the system we have and we have an input signal what is the input signal input signal is the movement of the stick and what is the output signal output signal is the movement of the mass here you can see in this animation how it is working. Now let us take another example. We have considered water tank system. We have two water tanks. So this is a water tank which has more radius and uh, this water tank is having comparatively less uh, radius. Here we have a pipe and water is coming out of the pipe and uh, this rate of the water coming out of the pipe is R0 of T. 
based on that the water height will increase in the first tank so this is tank 1 this is tank 1 and in tank 1 the height of the water will increase based on the rate of flow of the water through the pipe and there is a hole in the first tank right and because of that reason water will flow to the second tank and R0 of T is the rate of flow of water from the actual pipe and R1 of T is the rate of flow of water from the first tank so because of that the water will come and the second tank so this is tank 2 tank 2 will be filled and the height of tank 2 is given as H2 of T and again there is a hole in tank 2 so because of that reason water will come out of the tank and the rate of flow of water coming out of the second tank is given as R2 of T so here the tank system the entire tank system is an example of a system and we have an input signal and output signal what is the input signal input signal is R0 of T so what is happening suddenly some water is coming suddenly the water is becoming zero so that is how the water is moving in this particular example what happens to the rate of water coming out of the second tank so that is given like this right that is given like this so it is slowly increasing reaching to a maximum and then it is slowly decreasing here this is the input signal this is the input signal and this is the output signal this is the output signal so these are examples from mechanical engineering it is not necessary that the input signal and output signal are always voltage rate of flow of water is taken as the input signal and output signal so let us see an animation of this particular uh, case in the next slide so this is the input signal r0 of t and this is the output signal r2 of t so let us see an animation so here you can see r0 of t and r2 of t so this is the input signal this is the output signal and the water tank system is the example of a system in this particular case now let us take a complicated example that is cruise control system so what is my cruise control system in some modern cars there is a setting called cruise control system if we have long straight roads for long distance say two kilometer or three kilometers then it is difficult to keep our leg on the accelerator pedal instead of that we can put the car in cruise mode so the cruise control system will take care of the speed of the vehicle so it will maintain a constant speed in this straight road so this is mostly used in the straight road so you can take your leg from the accelerator and so you can keep your hand on the steering and the vehicle will maintain a constant speed so that is the basic idea of cruise control system now let us see how the cruise control system is working so the block diagram of the working of a cruise control system is given here so first we have to set a desired speed then the electronic control unit or ECU of the car will give instruction to the throttle unit responsible for acceleration so the throttle unit is responsible for how much fuel is used for the movement of the vehicle so the throttle unit will be controlled by the ECU so ECU will give instruction to the throttle unit and based on that the engine will be working right so we will get an actual speed maybe let us say 55 kilometer per hour 55 kilometer per hour because there is some resistance from wind even though the vehicle is set for 60 km per hour because of the wind resistance we get around 55 km per hour now we have a speed sensor in our car in this entire system we have a speed sensor the speed sensor will sense the actual speed and it will send instruction or the error signal what is the difference here we can say there is a difference of 5 km per hour difference right so 5 km per hour. that is given as the error signal here and that error signal is considered and that error signal is again given to the electronic control unit or ECU and again decision is taken till the speed is maintained at 60 km per hour right this is the basic idea of cruise control system maybe sometimes if there is a slope going downwards the vehicle speed will increase and it will go to 65 km per hour actually we are set for 60 km per hour right again the same speed sensor will give instruction to the ECU ECU will take the decision and the speed of the vehicle will be maintained at 60 km per hour so this is an example of a closed loop system closed loop system so more about this uh, can be uh, studied in control system there is a subject called control system 
you can study but this is an example of a system and here the signal the input signal is the desired speed here the input signal is the desired speed and the output signal is the actual speed what is the desired speed we set that is the input signal and what is the actual speed at what speed the car is moving that is the output signal in this particular case and the entire system of cruise control is the example of the system so next example we can take from our home that is the temperature control system how a temperature control system work again we have a same uh, block diagram so this is also an example of a closed loop system closed loop system right so let us consider the working of a temperature control system for example first we set a temperature 25 degrees celsius in our remote controller the electronic controller in the ac or air conditioner will instruct the heat pump to adjust the temperature of the room for 25 degrees celsius based on the room model so so many parameters from the room need to be considered and also the external temperature need to be considered so based on that the uh, ecu will set some temperature and we will get some cooling in the room so that is called the actual temperature here the desired temperature we set on the remote is the example of input signal this is the example of input signal and the actual temperature is the example of output signal output signal and now if the temperature is uh, 28 degrees celsius right it does not reach the expected temperature then there is a thermometer the thermometer will sense the temperature actual temperature of the room and based on that here there is a 3 degrees uh, celsius difference right that information is given here to the controller based on that the controller will instruct again instruct the heat pump to reduce the temperature until it reach to a temperature 25 degrees celsius sometimes the temperature will go to 20 degrees celsius right so at that time again the error signal will go up to the electronic controller and the electronic controller will ask to switch off the heat pump right so that the temperature will again come back to uh, 25 degrees celsius right so this is how the ac is working that's why you can see that if you are using a split ac sometimes you can see the sound of the ac after some time it will stop working and again after some time it will again turn on so this is because of this temperature control system it is also an example of a closed loop system closed loop system right so here also we can see that there is an input signal there is an output signal there is a system as such right now see another example that is uh, from electrical engineering that is voltage across the capacitor assume that we have a battery here let us say the battery is providing a voltage of v and because of that battery some current will flow through the circuit let us call it is i of t so this indicates that this current is depending on the time right this current is varying with respect to time that is why it is denoted as i of t and because of this i of t some voltage will be developed across the capacitor so there is only one capacitor in the circuit and some voltage will be developed across the capacitor we will connect a voltmeter like this across the capacitor so we will get a voltage vc of t so we use this c to denote that this voltage is across the capacitor so here there is a voltage which is across the capacitor which is depending on time again that is also depending on time so this is the things need to be considered here but if we carefully observe you can see that the voltage is gradually increasing gradually increasing and reach to a peak value similarly the current will go to a peak value in the initial stage and then it will come back to zero once the capacitor is fully charged current can be considered as the input signal input signal and what is the voltage developed across the capacitor that is vc of t can be considered as the output signal that can be considered as the output signal and the capacitor itself is the example of a system right so as i have explained the system can be of very simple elements like mass or capacitor or it can be complicated like cruise control of the car or air conditioning system right so let us take another very complicated system so the very complicated system uh, given here is cell phone communication system what are the things are happening when you call your friend from your mobile phone there are so many systems involved so if you take the cell phone communication system you can have a block diagram like this the sound input given to the cell phone from your mouth is the input signal here input signal and uh, the sound output heard by your friend at the other end is the example of an output signal output signal right so all the things in between there are so many things in between what are this all these things there there is a cell phone this cell phone is transmitting em waves it is reaching to the cell tower using an optic fiber it is going to another switching stations again it is reaching to another cell tower near to your friend 
and that cell tower is again communicating uh, your friend's cell phone through EM waves and finally it is reaching to the cell phone of your friend and the cell phone is producing the output sound. So this entire system is a very complex system and for example an engineer working at the cell tower level he will think that the cell tower itself is a system and it has so many other subsystems. But as a cell phone user, we can see all these things as a system. So this is an example of a very complex system. Here also there is an input signal, there is an output signal and the input signal is processed by the system to generate an output. So this is the block diagram of a 5G network. So you can see the complexity. I am not going to explain the working of all these things but you can see the complexity involved. For a cell phone user all these things together form a uh, system right but for an engineer who is working in the main switching center uh, this is the system there can be so many subsystems sometimes uh, we have simple systems like capacitor or mass sometimes we have very complex systems like cell phone or 5g communication system which has so many other subsystems now let us take an another example from biomedical engineering here the example is ecg system the voltage received by these electrodes because of the electric pulses generated on the surface of the heart is the input signal. Now what is the output signal? This is the output signal. This is the output signal. So that is the ECG waveform uh, shown on a paper or a screen. That is the output signal. And the entire system, this is the system. The ECG device is the example of a system. So let us see the block diagram. So we have a voltage signal coming from the heart and that is given to some electrodes. That is the ECG electrodes here. There are around um, 10 electrodes and there is something called lead selector. So this lead selector will select inputs from different electrodes and given to the amplifier. Normally this amplifier will be an instrumentation amplifier or a operational amplifier and the amplified voltage is given to the galvanometer that is moving coil galvanometer and the moving coil galvanometer is connected to a stylus or this is also called a pen and the pen will be moving based on the voltage difference. Here again we have a drive motor and a gear train to control the movement of the paper. right? So we are considering the old style ECG machine. Here we have a graph paper which is moving. So that is controlled by some motors. The stylus will be moving on the surface of the paper to draw the ECG like this. So the ECG graph is the output. So this is another example of a uh, system. Here also the system is a little bit complicated but you have to remember that the voltage signal from the heart is the example of the input signal and the ECG graph is the output and the entire other things here in this block diagram is the example of a system. Right? So these are all different examples of signals and systems from different domains like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and uh, biomedical engineering. If we consider the actual signals and system subject, it is like an ocean shown here. Actually what we study in the subject is like some water collected from this uh, ocean in a bucket. Because of that reason, we should be polite uh, even if we complete the subject signals and system because we have learned only a few concepts from the big ocean, right? So we should be polite enough to admit that we have learned only uh, the fundamental concept of signals and system. So please keep in your mind that the subject uh, signals and system is a very broad subject with so many other sub branches and we will be learning only a few concepts from the subject. So I hope you got some ideas. Thank you very much for your patient listening. We will see you again in another video.